and I rise to speak on the Water Amendment Restoring Our Rivers Bill. Now, the first thing for me to say is that neither the Murray nor the Darling River runs through Tasmania. But that doesn't mean that I don't take an interest or care about the Murray-Darling Basin and the plan to make sure the rivers will continue to flow. Jackie Lamb Network has been banging on about our nation, nation's national food security and national water, food water ever since I was elected. The Murray-Darling Basin supports $22 million in agricultural activity and it is part of our nation's food bowl. Over 2 million Australians call the Basin home and 40 First Nations people have called it home for a 1,000 generations. The Murray-Darling Basin also generates billions of tourism dollars, not to mention the internationally recognised wetlands and the animals, birds and the fish that live on and in the rivers. The Murray-Darling Basin has many stakeholders, and that includes communities in the basin and beyond. These are people in Adelaide and as far as Wyala on South Australia's Ear Peninsula who drink its water. But for a long time... There's been too much water taken from the Murray and the Darling Rivers. It took the millennium drought for our leaders to wake up to the idea that a plan was needed to address the over-extraction of water. Back in 2006, water ministers from the affected states and federal governments met and agreed that if things didn't change, it, could le it would lead to environmental, economic and social disasters. And for once, everyone agreed that action must be taken. A year later, the Water Act 2007 was passed, guided through the Federal Parliament by then Federal Water Minister Malcolm Turnbull. It legislated the need for a plan, and the scientists got to work, and in October 2010, the Murray-Darling Basin Authority scientifically said we needed to return at least 3,900 gigalitres of water. That was for a low certainty of success. But the scientists at the time said that a better number was 7,600 7, gigalitres for a high certainty of success. The big irrigators weren't happy and they saw an immediate challenge to their bottom line. Protests were organised, there were even burnings of the guide in Griffiths. Well-paid lobbyists were engaged and political arms in this building were twisted. And I can tell you, nothing much has changed. And in the end, and in the end what do you know, as per usual, politics trumped over science. I know that sadly won't surprise many Australians out there. But the lobbyists had done their work and the plan for water was reworked, so it only called for 2,750 gigalitres to be returned to the river system, plus another 450 gigalitres of efficiency water that South Australia insisted on before agreeing to the plan. Instead of a scientific number between the 3,900 and the 7,600 gigalitres of water being returned to the river. The target was just set at 3,200 gigalitres and you wonder why we're standing here today. Even the scientists did agree that the 3,200 gigalitres was enough, and by the way, they didn't. To make matters worse, the government hadn't factored in climate change, which, of course, making the situation even worse. It's getting hotter infl and inflows into the southern basin are falling. So less water, so less water is going in, more is lost through evaporation, and there has been no reduction in what's been taken out of the river. 13 billion bucks was set aside to implement this scientifically flawed plan. And what happened? It failed. The target has fallen short of the 2,750 2, gigalitres, and after nearly 10, 10 years, the plan has only recovered just over 60% of the target, and of the 450 gigalitres, only 5% has been achieved. That in itself is shameful. That's a pretty bad return for you Australians out there for your 13 billion bucks worth, eh? 13 billion bucks are your money. After 10 years, very full poor performance of the Abbott, Turnbull, Morrison governments. Labor has been left to clean up the mess. But this gets even better. After your 13 billion bucks of waste, it's now taken Labor, it's taken the Minister Plebisek 18 months to come up with a plan to fix the water flows and keep the rivers flowing. And this is what they've come up with. The bill before us isn't perfect. As a matter of fact, it is far from it. It is far from it. And it's not a winner for any of the stakeholders. No one's winning out of this. You've had 18 months to come up with a plan of trash. And that's what the taxpayer's paying for. And that's the truth of the matter. This is the best thing you can deliver in here. My goodness me, Labor is slipping, isn't it? Let's go. For example, the Coalition originally promised First Nation people 40 million to buy water entitlements. By the way, the 40 million never turned up, and now the Labor government is promising 100 million. 
but the bill doesn't in law recognise the connection of these nations. And the bill also removes the cap on water buybacks, which is the main method for getting water, to getting water back into the rivers. And guess what, Australia? The government won't even say how much this will cost. That's right. Got no costing on it. Got no costing on it. And another thing the government is hiding behind is a commercial inconfidence, as per usual. Not, they're no better either side. Australians are no better either side. It also doesn't address, wait for it, targeted reforms that will take into account climate change projections. They have not done that. They have not done that, but the Greens have decided to sign the paper up with them. All right, I don't see any amendments that address that. But don't worry, the Greens are signing up with the Labor Party here. With the environmental groups, listen, this environment groups telling the media that this bill is doing the bare minimum. This is as good as it gets from a, Lib from a, um, from a Labor Green government. This is as good as it gets. This bill, this bill also de delays a review on the operation of the Act. As a farmer told me, and I quote, I've never been to so many depressing farming meetings since this bill was announced, end quote. And they're not already doing it tough enough. Something has to be done. We're at a fork in the river. Down one path is a smooth ride, free of conflict with big irrigators and state governments, but which will inevitably lead to dry creek beds and environmental disasters. Down the other path are some political rapids that will take a bit of courage to push through, but will lead to a sustainable system where everyone benefits, even irrigators. This looks to me like another bill from this government that has been desired to do a little bit here and a little bit there, but it's never going to fix it. It's like being half pregnant. That's it. You haven't got the glory to go all the way and do what needs to be done for our national water security. This is what it comes down to. And why aren't we looking at what crop production best meets the national interest? Why aren't we looking at that? What crops are needed to provide a variety of food for Tasmanians? Have we learned nothing through COVID? We learned nothing through COVID on that side. Obviously not. Which community and businesses can be transitioned so they can survive into the future? Where's all that done? Look at the cotton and the almonds, crops that use hundreds of gigalitres of water, but we ship it off. So huge hedge funds, that's the right, the hedge funds and big business can make mega profits. Don't worry about our food and water security in Australia. Don't worry about that. You have neglected to that as per usual. We live in the driest continent on the planet and exporting co cotton and almonds is the same as exporting water. How dumb is that? How dumb is that? I thought this government was going to bring back manufacturing. I thought it was going to bring some common sense back in here. Obviously not. It has not. It was going to make Australia make, make again. We're going to make it great. Well, we're 18 months in. How's that going for you? Not so bloody great, is it? I'll be looking at the, every one of these amendments and we'll be looking at them very carefully like we have done this morning. Because as per usual, having everything wedged at us at once as a crossbench is not helpful. And I'm hoping that some of these amendments may just make this bill just a little bit better, although I have my doubts. I also want to make sure that this apparently new plan will protect our food security, which I actually have no faith in you in doing that whatsoever, to be honest. None whatsoever. And I ask the Australian people not to have any faith in them either. Because I do not believe you'll get the job done. So my question to you is, Minister, could you please, I have not seen it, but apparently is there or is there not economic modelling in relation to this bill?